places. Hi guys, so we're on day 21. Professor John Cooper confirms that Ian Fitzgibbon, his client, will today give evidence. So Ian Fitzgibbon is sworn in and Mr Cooper starts. Mr Cooper tells his client, I'll tell you what I tell everybody. Keep your voice up, this is your opportunity to give your version of events. He gives his full name as Ian Christopher Fitzgibbon and he confirms he is 28 years old. John Cooper says, a little bit about yourself first, where were you brought up? Ian Fitzgibbon says, in the Old Swan area. John Cooper says, do you have brothers or sisters? Ian Fitzgibbon says, two little sisters, Claudia and Amber. Claudia's 26 and Amber's 23. John Cooper says, your mum's been in court throughout this trial, hasn't she? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir. John Cooper says, what sort of work have you done in the past? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I've never really worked. I've always sold cannabis, to be honest. John Cooper says, when did you start doing that, Mr Fitzgibbon? Ian says, about 10 years ago. John Cooper asks, what sort of levels of cannabis selling were you involved in? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I get a kilo of cannabis and I sell it in ounces. Ian Fitzgibbon also says he would earn around £1,800 to around £2,700 per month by selling to different friends around the city. John Cooper said, I'm going to ask you about your previous convictions now. I'm going to ask you to tell the jury about every single one of them. Was your first conviction at Liverpool and Nosley Magistrates Court on the 26th of March 2015? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir. John Cooper asks, was that for possession of a controlled drug of Class B, cannabis and cannabis resin? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir. John Cooper says, did you plead guilty? And Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes I did. John Cooper says, every single offence, you pleaded guilty to. Ian Fitzgibbon says, yeah, that's right. John Cooper says, as a result of your plea, you are fined £40 and certain cost orders made against you. Ian Fitzgibbon says, yeah, that's right. John Cooper asks, on June the 9th, 2015, in Liverpool Crown Court, you were there pleading guilty to possession with the intent to supply Class B cannabis. Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir, I was. John Cooper says, effectively, you were given a suspended sentence of imprisonment. Ian Fitzgibbon says, yeah, that's right. John Cooper says, six months suspended for 24 months. And Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir. John Cooper says, with various other requirements. Ian Fitzgibbon agrees and says, yeah, that's right. John Cooper says, third, on September the 19th, 2017, at Merseyside Magistrates Court, dangerous driving, plea of guilty. Ian Fitzgibbon says, yeah, that's right. John Cooper asks, were you given an interim disqualification? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir, that's right. John Cooper says, October the 17th, 2017 at Liverpool Crown Court. Possession of a controlled drug, Class B. Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir, that's right, cannabis. John Cooper asks, handling stolen goods, what did that relate to? Ian Fitzgibbon says, it was a stolen car. John Cooper asks, for that, were you given imprisonment for six months? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir, that's correct. John Cooper says, is it right that it's the top and bottom of your criminal record? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir, that's correct. 
John Cooper asks, are there any other offences of violence or threatening violence? And Ian Fitzgibbon says, no, sir. John Cooper then says he will put the prosecution case to his client and he asks Ian Fitzgibbon to outline his response. John Cooper says, they say you're an organiser of this terrible event, the killing, the murder of Ashley Dale, the target originally of Lee Harrison. Were you an organiser in any way of that? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no. John Cooper asks, if the Crown's case that you were part of organising that hit, do you in any way get involved? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no sir, Lee's been my friend for years. I've never seen no harm come to Lee or Ashley. John Cooper says, did you monitor the behaviour of the others on that night? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no sir, not at all. John Cooper says, the prosecution said that you knowingly involved yourself with a hit on Lee Harrison with a common purpose that any other person in the way should be killed. Were you involved in an organisation of a hit on Lee Harrison with also an understanding that anyone that was there at the time would be killed? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no sir, that's not true. Lee's always been my friend. I've never seen no harm come to Lee. John Cooper says, Sean Zeiss, did you know him? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I knew Sean for about 12 years. He's been with my cousin Olivia for about 6 years. I got closer with him when he was with our Olivia. John Cooper says, how would you describe your relationship with Sean Zeiss? Ian Fitzgibbon says, we was good friends. I consider Sean as my best friend. John Cooper asks, when you were with Mr Zeiss, what sort of things would you be doing? Ian Fitzgibbon says, chill out, go down to me nans and have a couple of drinks. Party now and again, get drinks together. Generally, we'll just chill out and party with each other. I take my girlfriend, Daisy. John Cooper asks, Daisy is your girlfriend? And Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir. John Cooper says, is she in court today? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes, sir. John Cooper says, how long have you been going out? Ian Fitzgibbon says, four years now. John Cooper says, now Barry, how well do you know him? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I know Gary for about three or four years through Sean and Lee. I've never been close to him. Since Ricky died, that's how I got to know him better, through Sean. John Cooper asks, did you ever socialise on a one-to-one -one basis? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no, never. John Cooper says, do you ever go out to his flat? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I've never been to his flat. John Cooper says, James Witham, did you know him? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no, Witham's only been around since Ricky died. I've always heard of him through Lee and Sean, but I never really knew him. Since Ricky, that's when he's been about. He's always been with Barry. I've seen more of him since Ricky died. John Cooper says, Joseph Piers. And Ian Fitzgibbon says, I knew of Joe for years, since school days. He was a boxer. I used to do a bit of boxing myself, so I just knew him as a good boxer. Since Ricky had died, he'd been around Sean more often. Three or four months before this happened, I got to know him a bit better. On a social level, I'd have a drink with him, sit in Zest Mums, I'd always be with Sean. John Cooper says, Michael Kershaw, did you know Mr Kershaw? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I knew Michael Kershaw for roughly a year. I got to know him through Sean. The flat on Pilch Lane, I always thought that was his flat. That's how I got to know Kershaw a year before these events, through Mr Zeisk. John Cooper says, what flat was Mr Kershaw associated with? Ian Fitzgibbon says, the flat on Pilch Lane, 267. John Cooper says, you thought that was his flat. Was it his flat? Ian Fitzgibbon says, as far as I was aware, it was his flat. I only ever knew that to be his flat. John Cooper says, what gave you the idea it was Mr Kershaw's flat? 
Ian Fitzgibbon says. Every time I'd go down there, he'd be in there. I thought he had a grow in there as well. John Keeper says, were you involved in any way with the cannabis? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no, sir. John Keeper says, what was your connection with 267 Pilch Lane? You thought Mr Kershaw lived there. What was your connection? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I had no connection. I just go down to socialise and have a few drinks. John Keeper says, how often would you go there? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I'd say two, three times throughout the week maybe. John Keeper says, when you socialise, who would usually be there? Ian Fitzgibbon says, Sean, Kershaw, Barry, Joe, with him and David McKay, Lee Brewer, all different types of people. John Keeper says, what do you mean by socialising? Ian Fitzgibbon says, smoking cannabis really. John Keeper says, did you know Mr Radford? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no sir, never spoke to him or seen him before in my life. John Keeper asks, were you in any way involved in getting the Hyundai motor car? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no sir, I wasn't. John Keeper says, Lee Harrison, did you know Lee Harrison? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yeah, he's been my friend for 10 plus years or so. John Keeper says, in general, how would you describe your relationship with Lee Harrison? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I've always had a good healthy relationship with him, always had a good laugh with him. I parted with Lee since I was 17, 18 years old. John Keeper says, Ashley Dale, did you know her? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yeah I knew Ashley for years as well. She's friends with our Olivia, my sisters, she's a lovely girl. John Keeper says, how long have you known Miss Dale for? Ian Fitzgibbon says, since she's been with Saz, I got to know her more often through partying in town together and being in festivals together. John Keeper says, Olivia, your cousin, did she know Miss Dale? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yeah, they were friends. John Keeper asks, did you get on with Olivia? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yeah, she's like my older sister, to be honest. John Keeper says, Olivia was close friends with Miss Dale. Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes, sir, that's correct. John Keeper says, did you know Miss Dale lived with Lee Harrison? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yeah, I did. John Keeper says, it suggested you knowingly were involved in organising a hit whereby anyone would be killed. Do you understand that it's a Crown's case against you? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I understand, but it's untrue what the Crown are saying. I've never seen no harm come to them. Majoria then showed a series of photographs. John Cooper says, it's right that the first ten pages come from Miss Dale's telephone. Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir. John Cooper says, page two. Can you identify who the people are on that photograph? Ian Fitzgibbon says, that's me, Lee Harrison and Michael Earl. John Keeper says, is that you in the middle? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir. John Keeper says, to the left, is that Lee Harrison? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir, that's Lee, Saz. John Keeper says, the other individual. And Ian Fitzgibbon says, Michael Earl. John Cooper says, where was that taken? And Ian Fitzgibbon says, in town, I can't remember the exact location. Definitely in Liverpool city centre. John Cooper says, when was that taken? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I'd say maybe about five years ago. John Cooper says the picture was recovered from Ashley's phone goes on to say, do you recall who took that photograph? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I can't remember sir, who took the photograph. John Keeper says, your friendship went back at least five years. Ian Fitzgibbon says, I'd say more than that. John Keeper says, were you casual friends, good friends? And Ian Fitzgibbon says, I'd say we're good friends. 
John Cooper says, what did you do together? And Ian Fitzgibbon says, party together in town or in festivals. Just chill and have a drink together. John Cooper says, was there any disagreement between you and Lee Harrison? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no, we've always had a good healthy relationship. John Cooper asks, page three, an image of a group of males believed to include Lee Harrison, Sean Zysk, Ian Fitzgibbon and Ricky Warnie. Is that right? Does it show them? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir, it does. John Cooper says, where was that taken? And Ian Fitzgibbon says, in Manchester, we parted there for New Year. There was an event on in Manchester, I'd say three years ago. John Cooper says, there's you with Lee Harrison, Sean Zysk and Ricky Warnick. Tragically, he lost his life. Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir, he unalived himself. John Cooper says, what was your relationship like with Ricky Warnick? Ian Fitzgibbon says, he was my good friend. John Cooper says, the four of you together at a social event? And Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir. John Cooper says, do you go together? And Ian Fitzgibbon says, yeah, we all went together. John Cooper says, was Miss Dale there? And Ian Fitzgibbon says, I'd assume she was there, I can't remember. It was just me and all the lads together. The next photograph to be shown to the jury shows Lee Harrison and Ian Fitzgibbon. Ian Fitzgibbon says, this was at Glastonbury, not the last one that's been on. The one before COVID started. I say 2020 or 2019. John Cooper says, can you recognise yourself on that picture? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yeah, the top left with the cap on and the hood up. John Cooper says, do you see Mr Harrison? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir, the lad in the red top on the second bottom. John Cooper says, looks like he's got a medallion around his neck. Ian Fitzgibbon says, yeah, yeah, it's a Glastonbury map. He's then shown another picture of Lee Harrison and Ian Fitzgibbon. John Cooper says, looking slightly younger there, is that fair to say? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir. John Cooper says, are you the taller one with longer hair? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir, that's correct. John Cooper says, where was that? Ian Fitzgibbon says, that was in town. I'm sure it was a place called Wonderland. By 1819, we was on that picture. John Cooper says, had you gone together? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I can't remember. We all used to go out and meet up with each other in town whenever we went. They then show the jury a picture of Lee Harrison and Ian Fitzgibbon. John Cooper says, is that you at the back, the taller man? Where's Lee Harrison? Ian Fitzgibbon says, at the front in the blue jacket, around his neck. John Cooper says, where's that? And Ian Fitzgibbon says, it's in Glastonbury 2019, the one before the pandemic. John Cooper asks, is it the same one as we previously looked at? And Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir. John Cooper says, page 11, do you know who took this photograph? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I assume Ashley took the photograph. John Cooper says, the first 10 were certainly taken by Ashley. You say this one was, are you sure? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes, it was at Elliot's funeral. I can remember talking to Ashley at the bar. John Cooper asks, whose funeral was it? Ian Fitzgibbon says, our friend Elliot, Elliot Mulligan. John Cooper says, when was that funeral? Ian Fitzgibbon says, May the 30th, 2022. John Cooper asks, this is a few months before the tragic events of August. And Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir. John Cooper says, I want to have you identify all of the people you're with in this picture. Clearly we can see you. Who is the man with his hand around your shoulder? Ian Fitzgibbon says that's Jordan Thompson, Dusty. John Cooper says, 
The Crown put him as a member of the Hillsiders. Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir, they do. John Cooper says, is Lee Harrison on that picture? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yeah, he's on the right hand side to me there. John Cooper says, you're standing in the middle of Dusty and Lee Harrison. Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir, that's correct. John Cooper says, I made a 30th 2022. And Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir. John Cooper says, who is the individual on our right of the picture? Ian Fitzgibbon says, that's Sean Zeiss. John Cooper says, let's look at page 13. These are pictures taken on June the 24th, 2022. Around about that time, where were you going? Ian Fitzgibbon says, on my way down to Glastonbury with my girlfriend. John Cooper says, is this off Snapchat? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir. John Cooper asks, what is Snapchat? And Ian Fitzgibbon says, it's just a social app where people can take pictures, send them to each other or save them in stories and communicate with their friends too. John Cooper says, let's look at some of these pictures from Snapchat. Who are the two people on those pictures? Ian Fitzgibbon says, me and my girlfriend Daisy. John Cooper says, who's taking that picture? Ian Fitzgibbon says, Daisy. John Cooper asks, where are you? It looks like you're in a car. Ian Fitzgibbon says, we're in a car outside the hotel we stayed in at Glastonbury. John Cooper says, who did you plan to go to Glastonbury with in 2022? Ian Fitzgibbon says, me and my girlfriend, and just meeting up with friends and family, my brother and a friend and stuff. John Cooper says, how long have you been going out at this stage? Ian Fitzgibbon says, three years, we went down just me and Daisy, but we were actually attending with her friends, some of my friends also. John Cooper says, did you attend with now Barry or any of his friends? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no sir. Our Sean and Olivia met up down there. I seen them on Friday. John Cooper says, this was taken on June the 24th. Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir. John Cooper says, these are some images from Glastonbury. Glastonbury 2022. And Ian Fitzgibbon agrees and says, yeah, 2022. John Cooper says, who are the people we see on that photograph? Ian Fitzgibbon says, me. Daisy, and the cousin next to her on the right, is Johnny. John Cooper asks, would this be your group? Ian Fitzgibbon says, who I was with in Glastonbury with, yeah. John Cooper then refers to another picture taken at Glastonbury in 2022. John Cooper says, we see you at the back with the cap on. Who else do we see? Anyone in particular? Ian Fitzgibbon says, just my group. Just me with my girlfriend and the people who was down there. John Cooper says, page 21. You said you booked into a hotel with Glastonbury. Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir, that's correct. John Cooper says, is this the booking? And Ian Fitzgibbon agrees and says, yes sir. John Cooper says, page 23. More images of Glastonbury. Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir. That's correct. John Cooper says, Glastonbury 2022. And again, Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir. John Cooper says, who are the people we see? We see Daisy. Ian Fitzgibbon says, yeah, my friend Katie O'Leary and her boyfriend, Carl James. They then show more images from Glastonbury 2022. John Cooper says, are you on this picture? Ian Fitzgibbon says, on the right. John Cooper says, is Daisy there? And Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir. John Cooper asks, who are they? Ian Fitzgibbon says, Paul and his girlfriend, I don't know her name. They were part of the group. Fitzgibbon says he stayed at Glengarth House and Daisy made a booking for two on June the 24th. 
John Cooper says, how many times previous to 2022 had you been to Glastonbury? Ian Fitzgibbon says about five times. John Cooper asks, would you stay there for the duration or the odd day? Ian Fitzgibbon says, most of the time we went on the Wednesday and come home on the Tuesday. In 2022, I went on the Friday and come home on the Monday morning. John Cooper says, when you were at Glastonbury, did you have any dispute or disagreement with anyone ongoing at the time? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no sir. John Cooper says, I want to ask you about Ricky Warnick and the funeral. You'd known him quite well. Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir, he was my good friend. John Cooper says, and he committed, sadly, and unfortunately I have to block this word, so I have to say, unalived himself. Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes that's right. John Cooper says, did you attend the funeral on August 10th? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir, I did. John Cooper says, who was at the funeral? Ian Fitzgibbon says, half of the city to be honest, loads. He was a lovely lad. He was loved by everybody. By half the city, I mean at least 100 people if not more. John Cooper says, where was it held? Ian Fitzgibbon says, it was in Rainford. I forgot the actual name of that place. John Cooper says, did you go with anyone? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yeah, me, Sean Zeisk and Lee Brewer. John Cooper asks, how well did you know Lee Brewer? Ian Fitzgibbon says he was a friend. I haven't knew him for very long, six months. Through Sean, he was my friend, yeah. John Cooper asks, you all went on to 10th Street Social? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir, that's correct. That was a wait for Ricky. John Cooper says, did you attend with the same people? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir, I met up with other people there too. John Cooper then refers to the CCTV from 10 Streets. John Cooper says, do we see you on one of those images? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir. John Cooper says, who are the other people? Ian Fitzgibbon says, David McCabe, Joseph Pears, James Witham, Niall Barry, Michael Kershaw and Lee Brewer. John Cooper says, David McCaig, did you know him? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I won't really class him as a friend. I only just got to know him through Sean by going to that flat. I knew him for about four months or so. John Cooper says, how did he get to 10th Street? Ian Fitzgibbon says, in a car with me, Sean and Lee Brewer, Lee Brewer's car. John Cooper says, was your sister there? Ian Fitzgibbon says, she attended, my little sister Claudia. John Cooper says, did she know Mr Warnick? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yeah she knew Ricky well, he was a close friend to us. John Cooper asks, over 100 people attended? Ian Fitzgibbon says, if not more to be honest, yeah. John Cooper says, how long were you there? Ian Fitzgibbon says, all day till it finished, just listening to music. Maverick Sabre was on singing for Ricky, just spending time with everyone there, socialising, supporting everyone, his mum and his auntie. John Cooper says, was there any trouble? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no, it was one of the best funerals you could ever see for someone to be honest. John Cooper says, did you speak to Claudia when she arrived? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yeah, she was with me in there. John Cooper asks, after the wake, where did you go? Ian Fitzgibbon says, we'd gone back to Sean's on Longreach. Had a little party in his, my little sister, Sean, a few of us. Loads of us, to be honest. There was a party in another friend of ours, just fitting in between. John Cooper says, what time did you leave the wake? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I can't remember the exact time it finished. I was drunk. Everyone was closing. John Cooper says, you were there till the end of it. And Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir, that's correct. John Cooper says, we see Miss Dale arriving. Did you see her there? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I didn't see her there to be honest. There's that many people. John Cooper says, 
Miss Dale arrives at 6 minutes past 7pm. Ian Fitzgibbon says, yeah, I can see that. John Cooper says, where did you go after that? Ian Fitzgibbon says, we went to Sean's, had a little party on Longreach. There was another party somewhere else in Highton, and we were running out of there back to Sean's. John Cooper asks, can you remember anyone that was at this party? Ian Fitzgibbon says, there was a lot of people. My sister's friends, a few different lads. There was loads of us, just all Ricky's friends. John Cooper asks, how did you get to the parties? Ian Fitzgibbon says, in the same car with Sean and Lee. John Cooper asks, were there any others in the car? Ian Fitzgibbon says, just me, Sean's eyes, and Lee Brewer. John Cooper says, was there any unpleasantries or bad blood at those parties? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no, sir. John Cooper asks, were they all in commemoration of the life of Mr Warnock? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes, that's correct, sir. John Cooper says, let me take you further on. This is now. We're into an hour leading up to the shooting. On Saturday, August 20th, 2022, between the time we've asked you about, the wait, the parties in this particular time, had you any problems with anyone? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no sir, I've always just sit with me and Sean. I get along with everyone to be honest. John Cooper says, there was one situation we've touched on, which was Glastonbury 2022. Did something happen at Glastonbury 2022 that you recall? Ian Fitzgibbon says, um, Sean had got punched in the nose by a lad. John Cooper asks, was she there? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no, I'd come afterwards and I'd seen him afterwards. John Cooper asks, at Glastonbury, until that happened, what have you been doing? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I'd been with Daisy and her brother and her brother's girlfriend, partying at different stages. John Cooper asks, were there any problems? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no sir. John Cooper says, how did you become aware Sean had been hit? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I've been going down to meet Daisy's friends, Wally and the Joker and all their girlfriends. On the way down there, I bumped into Sean. He had a bloody nose. I said, what happened? He said, Wally punched him in the nose. John Cooper asks, who's Wally? Ian Fitzgibbon says, a lad that we know of. John Cooper says, when did this happen? Ian Fitzgibbon says, um, the 25th, early hours into the Saturday night, going into the Sunday morning. The 26th, yeah. John Cooper says, who were you with when you heard the news? Ian Fitzgibbon says, my girlfriend and all her friends, Johnny, her cousin and his mate. John Cooper says, did you say anything to Mr Zeiss? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I said what's happened, he told me what happened. John Cooper says, did it have anything to do with you? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no sir. John Cooper says, had you seen Mr Zeiss any earlier at Glastonbury? Ian Fitzgibbon says, on Friday at Fatboy Slim, when me and Daisy first arrived, we met Olivia and Sean. John Cooper says, were there any problems? Ian Fitzgibbon says no. John Cooper asks, after Mr Zess told you what happened, did he stay with you? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I bumped into him when he was with Lee and Olivia. I said, stay with me and we'll sort it. He went missing with Lee into the crowd. Olivia stayed with me because she lost him. She came with me to the people we was with. John Cooper says, you're telling him to make up and move on. Ian Fitzgibbon says, basically. John Cooper says, did you see Wally that night? Ian Fitzgibbon says, just afterwards, I was a couple of steps away from where this must have happened. I just said, what's going on with Sean? He said, I'll punch him in the nose, but it's nothing. John Cooper says, did he say why? Ian Fitzgibbon says, he didn't tell me why, no. John Cooper says, were you really interested? Ian Fitzgibbon says, not really. I felt sorry for Sean. He's always got along with these people. 
I don't know why he got punched in the nose. John Cooper says, did you try and bring them together? Ian Fitzgibbon says, later on that day, that was early hours going into the Sunday. That night, I was with Wally and everyone. I seen Sean. I shouted him over. We sorted it out. John Cooper says, that was the end to the matter. Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir, it was just stupid the way they were acting to be honest. John Cooper says, was that a Friday night or Saturday? Ian Fitzgibbon says, early hours on Saturday, I'd say four in the morning, going into the Sunday. John Cooper says, was this before or after you saw Niall Barry? Ian Fitzgibbon says, after. John Cooper says, when did you see Niall Barry? Ian Fitzgibbon says, on the Friday at the dance stage, from like 12 at night until 1 in the morning, in between. John Cooper says, that's Friday the 24th. You arrived on Friday. You've gone to the festival. You didn't go with Nile Barry or his group. Ian Fitzgibbon says, no, never went with him. John Cooper says, you see Mr Barry? Was that the first time you seen him at Glastonbury? Ian Fitzgibbon says, first and last time, yeah. John Cooper says, was he with anyone when you saw him? Ian Fitzgibbon says, didn't know who he was exactly, but he was with his group of people, yeah. John Cooper says, where were you when you saw him? Ian Fitzgibbon says, the stage is right ahead of me. I've been on the left hand side, looking over the stage that side, the metal fencing. It was just a DJ, just dance music. I couldn't tell you exactly who. It was more dance songs, dance music. John Cooper says, this is late Friday, early Saturday morning. Ian Fitzgibbon says, yeah. John Cooper says, did the stage have a name? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I can't remember sir. John Cooper says, who were you with? Ian Fitzgibbon says, me, Daisy, her brother Simon, his girlfriend, just a big group of us, a few of my friends. John Cooper asks, was there any fencing nearby? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yeah, we were standing on the left hand side, our backs are up against the fencing. John Cooper says, Mr Barry comes up to you. Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir. John Cooper asks, what does he say? Ian Fitzgibbon says, he said hello to me and my girlfriend and other people we was with. John Cooper says, did you say hello back? And Ian Fitzgibbon says, yeah, I said hello back. John Cooper asks, what did he say then? And Ian Fitzgibbon says, he said, have you seen Sean? John Cooper said, what did you say? And Ian Fitzgibbon says, I seen him at Fat Boy Slim earlier on, but I haven't seen him since. John Cooper asks, was there other conversation? Ian Fitzgibbon says, he said, have you seen Saz? And I said, no. John Cooper says, was that the truth? Had you seen him at that point? Ian Fitzgibbon says, at that point, no. John Cooper says, what did Mr Barry say? Ian Fitzgibbon says, he said, have you seen Saz? And I said, no. He said, tell him when you see him, I'm going to stab him up. John Cooper says, are you sure Mr Barry said that? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir. John Cooper says, who did he say that to? Ian Fitzgibbon says, to me. John Cooper says, are you sure he wasn't saying something generally to the group? Ian Fitzgibbon says, it was to me, and he doesn't really know my girlfriend and all that. John Cooper asks, could you be mistaken about that? Ian Fitzgibbon says no. John Cooper asks, did he do anything when he said that to you? Ian Fitzgibbon says, he didn't do nothing towards me. In his pocket, he pulled out a knife. Showed that he had a knife in his pocket. John Cooper says, did he produce the knife before or after he said that? Ian Fitzgibbon says, just as he was saying it, he went into his pocket, showed the knife and said, 
when you see Lee, tell him I'm going to stab him up and put it away. John Cooper says, can you describe what you saw? Ian Fitzgibbon says, just say it was a knife. John Cooper says, how long was that blade? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I didn't think that much into it. I just knew it was a knife. John Cooper says, did you see the handle? Ian Fitzgibbon says, um, I just seen the knife part. He's got hold of the blade. I just seen the metal, the shiny part. John Cooper asks, did you say anything? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I just said okay. John Cooper says, did you want to be involved with Lee Harrison having harm caused to him? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no, he's my friend. John Cooper says, how did you feel when you were told Mr Barry was looking to stab him? Ian Fitzgibbon says, shocked. I couldn't understand why he'd say that to me. He knows I'm mates with Lee. John Cooper asks, he's asking you as a friend of Lee to go and tell Lee. Ian Fitzgibbon says, basically, he was just drunk and off his head. But yeah, everyone who's there had been drinking, taking drugs. John Cooper says, in what way was he behaving? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no specific way. I don't understand why that happened while I'm standing there with my girlfriend. I just assumed he was off his head. John Cooper says, how was he behaving? Was he calm? Was he shouting? Ian Fitzgibbon says, he was a little rowdy. John Cooper asks, after Mr Barry had put the knife back in his pocket, what did he do? Ian Fitzgibbon says, he went back to the people he was at Glastonbury with. John Cooper says, when he said these things, were any members of his group with him? Ian Fitzgibbon says no. John Cooper asks, did you at any stage after that see Mr Barry again at Glastonbury? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no sir. John Cooper says, did you say anything to him about the situation? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no. When he said that, I just replied, okay, and he went away then. Back to the people he was with. John Cooper says, How did it make you feel? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I was a bit shocked. I wanted to get hold of Lee and tell him what's just been said. John Cooper says, Why did you want to do that? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I wouldn't want to see any harm come to Lee. He's my friend. John Cooper says, Did you say anything to anyone in your group? Ian Fitzgibbon says, my girlfriend and that had seen what happened. They were saying what's the problem. I said he's been saying he's going to stab Lee up. John Cooper says, there are messages recovered from Ashley's iPhone. On June 25th, 2022, the following messages were exchanged between the Instagram accounts of Claudia Fitzgibbon and Ashley Dale. June the 25th, at 3 minutes past 1pm, Claudia to Miss Ashley Dale. Hey Ash, have you got Lee's number for Ian please? Did you need Ian's number? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir, I told my little sister to message Ashley to get Lee's number. John Cooper says, why did you need Lee's number? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I wanted to meet him in the festival, tell him about the night before. John Cooper says, what in particular? Ian Fitzgibbon says, just the comments that were made to me by Barry. I wanted to warn him. I didn't want him to see no harm come to him at that festival. John Cooper says, Miss Dale's for your sister. Hey Claude, he hasn't got a phone but this is mine. She gives the number. Is that passed on to you? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir. John Cooper says, at 52 minutes past 2pm. Claudia Fitzgibbon to Miss Ashley Dale. Thank you, Ash. I've sent him a message with kisses. Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes, sir. John Cooper says there was a voice call from Ian Fitzgibbon's telephone to Miss Dale's telephone for 34 seconds. There was a further call from Mr Fitzgibbon's phone to Miss Dale's phone for about 28 seconds. Do you know what that was about? Ian Fitzgibbon says it would have been phoning Lee to say I'm going to come up and meet you. The second call would be to say, I'm leaving the hotel now. 
John Cooper asks, the 34 second one, did you speak to anyone? Ian Fitzgibbon says to Lee. John Cooper says, what did you say to him? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I just said I'm at the festival. I'm in the hotel. I'll be in the festival soon. I'll meet up with you somewhere. I met him in the festival and was with him and told him at that point. John Cooper says, there's a further call for 28 seconds. Who are you speaking to? Ian Fitzgibbon says to Lee, to say I'm heading into the festival. I'll meet up with him. John Cooper says, were you anxious to speak to him? Ian Fitzgibbon says, not anxious, I just wanted to speak to him. John Cooper says, there are WhatsApp messages between your phone and Miss Dale's phone. During the course of these calls, were you speaking to Lee Harrison? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yeah, I was speaking to Lee Harrison. I met up with him in Glastonbury and told him what happened. John Cooper says, these communications are all between you and Lee Harrison. Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir. John Cooper asks, are there any between you and Miss Dale? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I don't know whether that was Lee or Ashley texting me back, but I was getting hold of Lee through Ashley. John Cooper says, who did you think you were communicating with? Ian Fitzgibbon says, Lee. John Cooper asks, you'd already met up, did you say? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir. John Cooper says, with who? Ian Fitzgibbon says, with Lee, Ashley and Dusty. John Cooper says, before you sent these messages, where did you meet up? Ian Fitzgibbon says, at the Glade stage in Glastonbury. John Cooper says, at what time? Ian Fitzgibbon says, four, five o'clock. It was all still light. John Cooper says, what was said during that meeting? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I said to him, I seen Branch last night. He's pulled a blade out and he said he's going to stab you up. I said, stay with me, be careful. There's a good few of them around here. Lee just replied saying he wasn't going to do nothing. John Cooper said, did Lee Harrison seem particularly concerned by what you told him? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yeah, he seemed a bit put out with what I'd said to him. He was not too phased, he just said, I'm not going to do nothing. John Cooper says, why did you want to meet with Lee Harrison? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I wouldn't like to see no harm come to Lee. He's been my friend for years. Next, Mr Cooper refers to the agreed facts. John Cooper says, you met with Lee Harrison, spoke to him, then met with him. Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir, that's correct. John Cooper says, then again on June 25th, at four minutes past seven from you to Miss Dell's phone, you think you're communicating to Lee Harrison. Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir, that's correct. John Cooper says, but to Miss Dell's phone, where are you? Why are you asking Mr Harrison where he was? Ian Fitzgibbon says, to meet back up with them. I probably lost them in Glastonbury. John Cooper says, why having warned him, did you want to see him again? Ian Fitzgibbon says, so if he stays with me to make sure he's all right, he's only there with Ashley, Dusty and his cousin. John Cooper says, at eight minutes past 7pm, Miss Dell's phone to you. We're by the pyramid stage, where are you? That is Mr Harrison telling you where he is. Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir. John Cooper says, at 10 minutes past 7pm, we're in Stonebridge. Miss Harrison to you. Are you staying there? At 11 minutes past 7pm, you to Mr Harrison. It's just above the rabbit hole, Stonebridge. Yo. Then Mr Harrison to you, we're at the pyramid, Noel Gallagher is on, then we'll walk up to you's. Again, are you anxious to see him or speak to him again? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no, he's my friend. John Cooper says, who did you think you were talking to? Ian Fitzgibbon says, Lee. I asked my sister to ask Ashley for Lee's number. He never had a phone down there. Ashley sent her number. John Cooper says, when you're asking to meet up, who do you think you're asking to meet up with? Ian Fitzgibbon says, Lee, 
SARS. John Cooper says on June 26 in the early hours at 2 minutes past 12, you to who you think is Mr. Harrison, where's yous? Arcadia. Again, you're asking again there. There's a break between 19 minutes past 7pm and 2 minutes past midnight. Had you seen or communicated with him between that time? Ian Fitzgibbon says, probably not at that point, no. I'm asking where he is again. Checking up on him, making sure he's alright. Just after the comments were made, I'm making sure he's alright. He's only with Ashley, Dusty and his cousin. I was only saying come with me, making sure they're alright. Just worried about him and Ashley. I didn't want nothing to happen to him while he's with his girlfriend and his cousin. John Cooper says, at 36 minutes past two, you to Miss Dale's phone. Yo, where's you's gone? Then a couple of hours later, you're asking again, where's you's gone? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I would have just been with them. I probably would have just been with them. John Cooper says, June 26 still, now into the night, 14 minutes past 10pm. Again, you're asking, where's you? Ian Fitzgibbon says, that's correct. John Cooper says, at 38 minutes past 10pm, you're asking again, of a stage, where at? Then finally, at 38 minutes past 10pm, you get a response. We are the free. Do you know what that meant? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I think Lee meant to say we're at the free stage. John Cooper says, then virtually five seconds later, stage DJ. Once you got that message, did you do anything? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I would have probably went and met them. I was with them on Sunday again. John Cooper says, when you thought he was communicating with you on Lee's phone, when you heard from him again after that period of silence, how did you feel? Ian Fitzgibbon says, just as long as I knew he was alright, I felt sound. I'm just always checking on him to make sure he's alright. John Cooper says, after that, how long did you stay at Glastonbury for? Ian Fitzgibbon says, me and my girlfriend went home at like three, four o'clock on the Monday afternoon. John Cooper says, were there any other problems apart from the incident with Wally? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no sir. John Cooper says, where did you go when you left Glastonbury? Ian Fitzgibbon says, home with my girlfriend. John Cooper says, you and your girlfriend? And Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir. John Cooper says, I want to take you now back to the sequence of events and deal with some issues leading up to the 20th of August. This is the 19th of August. There we see you with Mr Witham going into a co-op store with Mr Piers waiting outside before they all leave together. Just to clear this up, were you involved in any trip to Wales? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no sir. John Cooper says, did you go to Wales with them? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I've never been down to North Wales in my life. John Cooper says, here you are with Mr Witham. You're there with Mr Pierce as well. When did you meet up? Ian Fitzgibbon says, it must have been when they got back. I've been in Sean's all day, having a drink with Sean on Longreach. I must have popped round to have a couple of drinks in the flat. John Cooper says, you've been with Mr Zai Square. Ian Fitzgibbon says, in his mum's on Longreach, we always used to sit there smoking weed, hash. They would have come round to Sean's most likely. John Cooper says, the time is 1942. Are you going to the co-op to buy anything or hanging out? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I probably would have got a drink and walked back over to the flat. John Cooper says, we see you walking out together. You return to 267 Pilch Lane. Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir, that's correct. John Cooper says, did you get to Pilch Lane? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yeah. John Cooper says, when you got to Pilch Lane, what did you do? Ian Fitzgibbon says, just had a couple of joints. Just chilled there, to be honest. I've had a few joints of ash. Ash is cannabis resin. John Cooper says, he was there at Pilch Lane. Ian Fitzgibbon says, Joe, James, Michael Kershaw, now Barry. Every time I go down the flat, he's, Kershaw's, always there. John Cooper says, 
This is 30 minutes past 11 p.m. Is that you leaving? Ian Fitzgibbon says, that's correct, sir. John Keeper asks, you're leaving at about half past 11 at night. Ian Fitzgibbon says, that's correct, sir, yes. I'm going home with my sister. It's usually always my sister who will drop me off at the flat on Pilch Lane and pick me up. She's picking me up. Ian Fitzgibbon then points out a black Volkswagen Golf which he says is his sister's car and says that she lives near to him. John Cooper says, why was she picking you up? Ian Fitzgibbon says, to take me home. I live over the road on Sefton Park. She picks me up all the time. John Cooper says, was that a usual event or unusual event? Ian Fitzgibbon says, usual, she'd always pick me up from there. John Cooper says, I want to take you to August the 20th. What time did you get up in the morning? Were you late up or what? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no, I'm usually always up early. John Cooper says, were you alone or with anyone? Ian Fitzgibbon says, alone in my flat and then went over to my sister's. John Cooper says, here we see at 9 minutes past 10am, the camera outside Go Local on Pilch Lane. The footage showing Mr Witham come out of the shop. At 15 minutes past 10am, Mr Witham receives a text message from you. You've moved to L14, where were you? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I would have been at my sister's around Sefton Park. John Cooper asks, what did you say? What were you communicating to Mr Witham? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I would have said to him, I'll be over now to pick him up. John Cooper asks, had an arrangement been made to pick him up? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yeah, he called me. He wanted to see if I wanted to go and get cannabis with him, off his friend. John Cooper says, when did he call you about that? Ian Fitzgibbon says, in the morning, around this time, earlier. John Cooper says, would that be usual or unusual? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I'd only just got to know him. We don't really know each other like that, to have a drink together. Just to have a joint with me, or he'd get on to me and say I've got a nice pollen. He was just seeing if I wanted to go and get a smoke with him. John Cooper says, did you? And Ian Fitzgibbon says, yeah. John Cooper says, what did you say to him? Ian Fitzgibbon says, is your mate on the wee? John Cooper asks, where was the location of this mate? Ian Fitzgibbon says, in Walton. John Cooper asks, what did you do then and after that arrangement had been made? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I borrowed my sister's car and headed over to Pilch Lane to pick him up. John Cooper says, at 15 minutes past 11, CCTV relating to Tasker's sports, the black golf, is that your sister's car? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir. John Cooper says, it enters Tasker's car park. Are you driving? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes, sir. John Cooper asks, have you got the drugs at that stage? That's what you were wanted to get with Mr Witham. Ian Fitzgibbon says, that's correct. John Cooper says, you stay in the vehicle. Why did you think you were going to Tasker's? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I didn't know that's where I was going when I picked him up. He said, do I mind taking him to Tasker's? He wanted to get a new pair of trainees. I was going to match with his son and Michael Kershaw. John Cooper asks, did you know if Mr Kershaw went with Mr Witham to the game? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I think he did, yeah. Later on, he arrived back at the flat together. I'm assuming he did go. John Cooper says, Later on, Mr Witham is associating with Mr Kershaw at the football match. After the trainers were bought, did Mr Witham come back to you? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I waited outside and had a smoke. He bought the trainers and came back to the car. He was excited. He was looking forward to going to the match. That's what I took from him in that moment in time. John Cooper says, Did you think that was anything untowards or suspicious about his behaviour? Ian Fitzgibbon says no. John Cooper says, where did you go then? 
Ian Fitzgibbon says, I dropped him off at his granddad's house on Page Moss. John Cooper asks, where did you go? Ian Fitzgibbon says, back to me sister's. John Cooper asks, what did you do there? Ian Fitzgibbon said, I had an appointment on Allerton Road, a chiropodist. I can't remember when I booked it. It would have been my mum or my sister who booked it for me, for me feet. John Cooper says, how long were you with your sister for? Ian Fitzgibbon says, three hours, three and a half hours or so. John Cooper says, this is at 53 minutes past 2 p.m. We see you with Mr. Pears. How did it come that you met up with Mr. Pears? Ian Fitzgibbon says, when I've had my feet done, my little sister was dropping me off at the flat. I called Joe and I said, are you coming down and having a few drinks? The fight was on later that evening. John Cooper asks, were you dropped off? What time approximately? Ian Fitzgibbon says, the time it shows here. John Cooper says, why did you want to be dropped off back at Pilch Lane? Ian Fitzgibbon says, We'd all said the night before we was watching the Anthony Joshua boxing that night on the flat. John Cooper says, Who's we? Ian Fitzgibbon says, Me, Joe, James, Sean, Michael Kershaw, all the lads basically. John Cooper asks, When was this understanding reached? Ian Fitzgibbon says, from the night before. John Cooper asks, on August the 19th? And Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir. John Cooper says, had you been with them? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I had a drink with them in the flat the night before. John Cooper says, the plan was made to watch the boxing. And Ian Fitzgibbon says, that's correct sir, yeah. John Cooper says, You've been into boxing yourself. And Ian Fitzgibbon says, that's correct, sir. John Cooper says, Mr Pierce was also very much into that sport. Ian Fitzgibbon says, that's correct, sir, yeah. John Cooper says, were there any other boxing fans? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I think everyone likes Anthony Joshua. He's a good fighter to watch. John Cooper says, was it a big fight? Ian Fitzgibbon said he was fighting Alexander Usyk for the belt, the World Championship belt. John Cooper says, in football terms, it was like a cup final. Ian Fitzgibbon says, basically, yeah. John Cooper says, had you been looking forward to it? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yeah. John Cooper asks, here we are on the day in question. We see you with Mr Pears getting out exiting the vehicle and going to go local. How did it come to you were in the same car? Ian Fitzgibbon says, on the way over, I called Joe. I said, are you coming to the flat? Have a few joints, watch the boxing. I picked him up from his mum's and got dropped off by my little sister. John Cooper asks, she picked you up with Mr Pears? Ian Fitzgibbon says, that's correct. John Cooper asks, and dropped you both off at Pilch Lane? Ian Fitzgibbon says, that's correct. John Cooper asks, were you talking about anything in particular? Can you remember? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no, the boxing that night. Just normal conversation. We'd just been in the shop to buy a few drinks. John Cooper says, why were you buying drinks? Ian Fitzgibbon says, because I was going to be smoking. I would have been stoned. I would have needed a drink as I'm smoking. John Cooper says, what were you preparing for? Ian Fitzgibbon says, the Anthony Joshua fight. John Cooper says, were you buying drinks for the fight? Ian Fitzgibbon says, we were just chilling out waiting for the boxing to start. The Smith brothers were fighting that night as well. John Cooper says, it might be said you are getting ready to organise the killing of Lee Harrison and if necessary, of Ashley Dale. That is the Crown's case, and I have put it to you. Ian Fitzgibbon says, I know it's a Crown's case, and it's completely wrong. I've never seen no harm come to me two friends. John Cooper says, three hours later, 
During the three hours that passed, what had you been doing? Ian Fitzgibbon says, just smoking in the flat. John Cooper says, here we see you and Mr Piers entering Go Local, making a number of purchases before going back to Pilch Lane. Did you make any purchases? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I bought drinks and chocolate and sweets. John Cooper says, why were you buying drinks, chocolate and sweets? Ian Fitzgibbon says, because I was stoned. I would have had the munchies. I would have drank the drinks I had earlier on. John Cooper asks, it's believed by the Crown, Joseph Pears and Ian Fitzgibbon purchased a top-up for Nile Barry. Did you purchase a top-up for Nile Barry? Ian Fitzgibbon says no, and I don't know why the Crown have said that. Quite clearly I haven't bought no top-up. They know. I bought my drink, sweets and chocolate, and it's all on CCTV. John Cooper says, who bought the top up? Ian Fitzgibbon says, Joe. John Cooper says, were you asked by Mr Barry to buy the top up? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no, when we've left the flat, Joe said to Barry, do you want anything from the shop? He gave him 20 quid and got the top up. John Cooper says, after you made those purchases, did you go anywhere? Ian Fitzgibbon says, back into the flat. John Cooper asks, what did you do? Ian Fitzgibbon says, just carried on smoking, getting stoned basically. John Cooper asks, were you planning on organising or in any way getting involved in the murder of Lee Harrison? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no, Lee's my friend. I've never seen no harm come to Lee, the same with Ashley, never. John Cooper says, CCTV shows James Witham and Michael Kershaw walking from the direction of the taxi and entering 267. It seems Mr Witham and Mr Kershaw are returning from the football match. Ian Fitzgibbon says, that's correct sir, yes. John Cooper says, it seems Mr Kershaw had been associating with Mr Witham for some hours after he left you. Ian Fitzgibbon says, that's correct sir, yes. John Cooper says, at 42 minutes past 7pm, CCTV footage shows James Witham, Joseph Pears and Ian Fitzgibbon leaving Pilch Lane and walking in the direction of the junction of Wyndham Avenue. Where are you going? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I said to James, will he take me to Jeffrey's Crescent to get more hash off a friend there? I'd go and see my friends there and get some hash. It just depends what type he's got at the time. People have different flavours of hash. John Cooper says, did you get any? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yeah. John Cooper says, did all three of you get some? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no, just me, sir. John Cooper asks, do you, Mr Witham and Mr Pears, travel to a disco stores on Moss Lane? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes, sir, that's correct. John Cooper asks, which is around the corner from Jeffrey's Crescent? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yeah. John Cooper says, how did you get there? Ian Fitzgibbon says, in Witham's car. John Cooper said, who was driving? Ian Fitzgibbon says, Witham. John Cooper asks, were you sitting in the passenger seat or the back seat? Ian Fitzgibbon says, the passenger seat. John Cooper says, did Mr Witham and Mr Pearce stay in the car? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no, they went into a disco to buy alcohol. I waited in the car. John Cooper says, any reason why you waited? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I wasn't drinking alcohol that night. I was just having a joint. I was stoned. John Cooper asks, did anyone else approach you? Ian Fitzgibbon says, James Witham ordered a bag of cocaine. John Cooper says, how did he order that? Ian Fitzgibbon says, just off a friend we know. He must have called him, texted him. I was in the car when the lad passed it through the window. John Cooper says, was this before Mr Witham and Mr Pears got out of the car to go to the store? Ian Fitzgibbon says, afterwards, when they got back into the car. John Cooper says, who did the lad pass it on to? Ian Fitzgibbon says, through the window to James. John Cooper asks, was this in any way involving you? 
Ian Fitzgibbon says, no, sir. John Keeper asked, after they returned to the car, where did you go? Ian Fitzgibbon says, back to 267 Pilch Lane. John Cooper asks, did you go to Pilch Lane? And Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes, that's correct. John Cooper says, at 28 minutes past 8pm, do we see you, Mr Pears and Mr Witham? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes, sir. John Cooper says, are you entering Pilch Lane? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yeah, that's me, Witham and Joe going back into the flat. John Keeper asks, you've driven to a disco store, or has Mr Witham driven to it? Ian Fitzgibbon says, we went to Jeffrey's Crescent first. John Keeper asks, in whose car? Ian Fitzgibbon says, James Witham's. John Keeper says, how do you get back to Pilch Lane? Ian Fitzgibbon says, in Witham's car. John Keeper asks, is there any topic of conversation going on between you? Ian Fitzgibbon says, just excited for the boxing, Anthony Joshua. John Cooper says, did you go into Pilch Lane? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I did, sir. John Cooper says, what was happening between you all? Ian Fitzgibbon says, we were just chilling, getting ready for the boxing. John Cooper says, he was in Pilch Lane. Ian Fitzgibbon says, now Barry, Michael Kershaw, me. Joe and James. John Keeper says, what was the atmosphere like? Ian Fitzgibbon said, it was good. We was all waiting for the main fight to start. We was all excited. We've been waiting all day. John Keeper says, at 32 minutes past 8pm, here we see you leaving Pilch Lane and going into Chans. It might be an obvious question, but why are you going into Chans? Ian Fitzgibbon says, just to get something to eat. John Cooper asks, was it for you or for others? Ian Fitzgibbon says, just for me, sir. John Cooper asks, the prosecution say, at this stage, you appear to have accessed yourself with a dispute involving Lee Harrison. Ian Fitzgibbon says, I understand that, but that's untrue, sir. John Cooper says, you would change your allegiances that had lasted ten years on that night. Ian Fitzgibbon says, I understand, but it's untrue, and it doesn't make sense. John Cooper says, did you suddenly change your allegiances on that particular night? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no. John Cooper says, did you have any particular allegiances? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no, and I'm friends with everyone, and it still baffles me now. It don't even make sense in what they're saying. It's untrue. John Cooper says, you're getting some food. Did you go back to Pilch Lane with it? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yeah. John Cooper says, we had Mr Zysk arriving at Pilch Lane. Ian Fitzgibbon says, that's correct, sir. John Cooper says, at 19 minutes past 9pm, he was a friend of yours. Were you surprised to see him? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no, I see Sean nearly every day in my life for the past six years. He was going to watch the boxing. John Cooper says, You told us also in the address amongst other people was Michael Kershaw. Ian Fitzgibbon says, That's correct, sir, yes. John Cooper says, How long had Mr Kershaw been in Pilch Lane? Ian Fitzgibbon says, Since he arrived back from the Everton match. John Cooper asks that he'd spent with Mr Witham. Ian Fitzgibbon says, that's correct, sir, yes. John Cooper says, at 10 past 10 p.m., we see Mr Witham and Mr Pears are leaving Pilch Lane. Ian Fitzgibbon says, that's correct, sir, yes. John Cooper says, up until Mr Witham and Mr Pears left, what had the atmosphere been like? Ian Fitzgibbon says, we was all just excited to watch the boxing. John Cooper says, what was the reception like on the television? Ian Fitzgibbon says it was normal. It was a bit glitchy when the boxing was on, but it was all right. John Cooper says, were there any discussion until Mr Pears and Mr Witham left? Ian Fitzgibbon says, Witham wanted to order more cocaine to the flat. 
Branch wouldn't allow it because he had a grow on in there. We were all stoned. John Cooper says, why not? Ian Fitzgibbon says, because there was a grow on in there. We were all stoned. I think he had a bit of a cob on with him. John Cooper says, who was all stoned? Ian Fitzgibbon says, me, Sean, Barry, Michael Kershaw, Joe, yeah. John Cooper says, how are you feeling? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I've been smoking all day. It just makes you relax and lazy. John Cooper says, did you feel you wanted to organise anyone or monitor anyone? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no sir. John Cooper asks, how have Mr Witham been behaving during this time? Ian Fitzgibbon says, he was a bit loud because he was drunk. He's been on cocaine. He was just excited for the boxing himself. John Cooper asks, when Mr Witham and Mr Pearce decided to leave, did they say anything? Ian Fitzgibbon says, they said they was going to Joe's mum, both of them. John Cooper says, was that unusual or usual or didn't you know? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I don't know sir, I thought they would have stayed and watched the boxing. John Cooper says, did you say anything to them? Ian Fitzgibbon says, not at that moment in time. John Cooper says, did they say anything else as to why they were leaving? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no sir. John Cooper says, was anything said about a feud or bad blood with Lee Harrison? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no sir. John Cooper says, they then left. And Ian Fitzgibbon says, that's correct. John Cooper says, when they left, who was left at Pilch Lane? Ian Fitzgibbon says, me, Sean, Michael Kershaw, now Barry, that's it. After lunch, John Cooper rises to resume his questioning and he says, We left a situation with Mr Witham and Mr Piers leaving Pilch Lane. I want to ask you about the telephone or messaging he did that night. That's what we're focusing on now. At 18 minutes past 10pm, we see you on your mobile. Was that at the time your personal mobile? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yeah, that's my personal phone. John Cooper says, did you start using it in about July the 24th, 2022? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes, sir. John Cooper says, did you purchase it for normal reasons for having a phone? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes, just to speak to me, little sisters, me girlfriend, me family on. And John Cooper says, the people you contacted since you had it, did it include your family? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir, that's correct. John Cooper says, your girlfriend? And Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir, that's correct. John Cooper says, family and friends you hung out with? And Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes sir, that's correct. John Cooper says, we see at 18 minutes past 10 p.m., you making contact or attempting to make contact with Mr Witham. Ian Fitzgibbon says, that's correct, sir, yes. John Cooper says, why did you contact him? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I text him saying, you's coming back to watch the boxing. John Cooper says, what sort of communication was that? A message or did you speak to him? Ian Fitzgibbon says, just a normal SMS text message. John Cooper says, what did you say? Ian Fitzgibbon says, are you coming back to watch the boxing? John Cooper asks, why were you interested in whether Mr Witham was coming back to watch the boxing? Ian Fitzgibbon said, we planned to watch the boxing there. We bought alcohol. I thought that's what we were meant to be doing. John Cooper says, did he respond? Ian Fitzgibbon says, he replied to me saying yes. John Cooper says, where did you think he was? Ian Fitzgibbon says, where he said he was going, which was Joe's mum's. John Cooper asks, what time did he leave? And Ian Fitzgibbon says, 10 past 10 p.m. John Cooper says, Mr Witham to you, is that the response? Ian Fitzgibbon says, he replied saying yeah. John Cooper says, 
at 23 minutes past 10 p.m. You to him. And Ian Fitzgibbon said, I said to him, bring a poly in, a poly is hash, cannabis resin. John Cooper says, these are all text messages, aren't they? Ian Fitzgibbon says, SMS, normal text messages, yeah. He replied saying okay. John Cooper says, during the time you're messaging him, where are you? Ian Fitzgibbon says, in the flat, 267 Pilch Lane. John Cooper says, what are you doing? Ian Fitzgibbon says, sitting there waiting for the boxing to start. It was about to start shortly. John Cooper says, at 6 minutes past 11pm, you voice call, one second, to Mr Witham. It probably follows, you didn't make contact. Ian Fitzgibbon says, that's correct sir. John Cooper says, why are you attempting to call him? Ian Fitzgibbon says, the main fight was about to start. We'd all been waiting for it all day to watch. I was calling him to say the boxing's about to start. Hurry up, bring a poly in on your way round. He also says that James Witham's mum's house was near to Jeffrey's Crescent. John Cooper then reads from a set of agreed facts. He says that in the boxing card involving Anthony Joshua and the Usyk fight, ring walks for the main event began at 11pm. The first round was at 15 minutes past 11pm. The fight concluded at 2 minutes past 12am and the result was announced at 9 minutes past 12am. John Cooper says there was a passage of communication or attempted communications between you and Witham and Mr Pears around about the time the fight was starting. Ian Fitzgibbon says that's correct sir. John Cooper says at 6 minutes past 11, 10 seconds or so after you attempt to contact Mr Witham, there's an attempted communication to Mr Pears. Ian Fitzgibbon says that's correct sir, yeah. John Cooper says, why are you trying to contact Mr Pears? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I couldn't get through to Witham, so I tried to contact Joe. I thought they were together. John Cooper says, at 7 minutes past 11pm, you attempted to contact Mr Witham again. Ian Fitzgibbon says, the same reason, to say the boxing's about to start. John Cooper says it may be suggested you're monitoring them on their mission. Ian Fitzgibbon says that's untrue. I'm using my personal phone. An hour later, I text my little sister to come and pick me up. It makes no sense. I won't see no harm come to Lee or Ashley. John Cooper says there is a message from Ian Fitzgibbon's phone to James Witham at 8 minutes past 11pm. Ian Fitzgibbon says when I've tried to call him, and his phone was call forwarded. With his network, he receives a text message saying he has had a missed call. John Cooper says, The fight, or the lead up to the fight, starts at 11pm. There's a call or series of messages shortly after Mr Witham leaves. Is he coming to the fight? Ian Fitzgibbon says, He said he was going to Joe's mum, so I text him saying, Are you coming back to watch the boxing? John Cooper says, during the early moments of the fight, you're attempting to communicate with them but failed, just as the fight starts. Ian Fitzgibbon says that's correct. John Cooper says, you're not making contact with them anyway. Ian Fitzgibbon says, I'm making contact for them to come back and watch the boxing. What the Crown are saying is untrue. I couldn't get through to them, no. John Cooper says, were you organising, monitoring, stewarding, guiding in those calls? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no sir, I've never seen no harm come to Lee or Ashley. They're my friends. I've been friends with Lee for ten years, longer than any of them in that flat apart from Sean. I'd never seen no harm come to Lee. John Cooper says, at 44 minutes past 12am, CCTV shows him leaving. He also says, this is you leaving Pilch Lane. Ian Fitzgibbon says, yes, that's me leaving, going into the shop before I go home. John Cooper says, Ian Fitzgibbon's phone is then self sighting in an area of his home shortly before 1am. John Cooper says, let's go back to your decision to leave Pilch Lane. Why did you decide to leave? Ian Fitzgibbon said, 
the boxing had finished. My mum lives in St Helens. My sister lives in Sefton Park. He also says after the fight, he was just having a joint. He says I text Claudia to leave my mum's in St Helens to pick me up. John Cooper says, were you involved in any form of communication with Mr Witham or Mr Piers? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no sir. John Cooper says, he was in the flat at that stage. Ian Fitzgibbon says, Sean, Niall and Michael Kershaw. John Cooper says, were you aware of anything bad having gone on at all at that stage? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no sir, no. John Cooper says, you called Claudia on your phone. Ian Fitzgibbon says, yeah. John Cooper says, Claudia comes. Ian Fitzgibbon says, she took a bit longer because she was diverted in traffic on her way from our mums. John Cooper says, she picks you up. Did you want to wait in any way to see whether Mr Witham or Piers would return? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no sir. I was only contacting them to watch the boxing. I had no reason to contact them again. John Cooper said after the boxing started, were you bothered to contact them again? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no sir, the boxing started. I only contacted them to come and watch the boxing. John Cooper asks, you lost interest in contacting them? Ian Fitzgibbon says, yeah, I've been waiting to watch the AJ fight all day. John Cooper says, did you have any reason to wait in the flat to see if Witham or Piers would return and have anything to say? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no sir. John Cooper says, were you expecting Witham or Piers to come back? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I was expecting them to come back and watch the fight, but they didn't come back. When the boxing started, I didn't contact them again. John Cooper says, were you bothered one way or another once the fight started? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no sir. John Cooper says, we see at 25 minutes past one, Mr Witham and Mr Piers return. When they return, where are you? Ian Fitzgibbon says, at home. John Cooper asks, were you interested in making contact with them that night? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no sir. John Cooper says, at 16 minutes past three, we see Mr Piers leaving 267 Pilch Lane. You weren't there. Then, at 20 minutes past four, we have Mr Witham leaving Pilch Lane. At 53 minutes past 10, we have Mr Barry and Mr Zeiss leaving 267 Pilch Lane and entering a silver Mercedes. This is the following day I want to deal with now. When you got back home, what did you do? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I watched the telly and had a drink until I went down to bed and went to sleep. John Cooper says, did anyone come to your home? Ian Fitzgibbon says, next day, yeah. John Cooper says, who was that? Ian Fitzgibbon says, Sean Zeiss can now bury. John Cooper says, before they arrived, what time approximately did they arrive? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I'd say from about 11.30 to 12 o'clock. John Cooper says, before they arrived, had you heard anything about what happened that night? Ian Fitzgibbon said, Claudia phoned me in the morning. She said our friend, Sophie O'Connor, had called her and said Ashley's been shot and killed. John Cooper says, can you remember what time that was? Ian Fitzgibbon says, it was early, about ten in the morning, quarter to ten. John Cooper asks, what did she say to you? Ian Fitzgibbon says, she called me and said Sophie O'Connor, Claudia's friend, had called her and said Ashley had been shot and killed. John Cooper says, did Claudia say anything else to you? Ian Fitzgibbon said she was just shocked, sir. John Cooper says, how did it make you feel? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I was shocked myself. It was terrible news. She's an innocent girl and she didn't deserve that. John Cooper says, before that, had you had any idea Miss Dale had been hurt? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no sir, just woke up. And my sister called me and told me that news. John Cooper says, did you say anything to Claudia? Ian Fitzgibbon said, I said I can't believe it. 
I was lost for words. It was terrible news. John Cooper asked, did Claudia say anything else? Ian Fitzgibbon says, no, sir. John Cooper says, what did you do then? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I'd done a joint in me flat. When I got up, I smoke. That's what I do every day. John Cooper asks, how are you feeling? Ian Fitzgibbon says, I was shocked. I was sad because Ashley's my friend. It's me mate's girlfriend. I just couldn't believe it. 